Looks like Ford is sending us another Bronco to drive. Let's take a close look at this price sheet and see what we're getting. Here's the option sheet. All the luxury items we really don't need but get anyway. Well, the 35 inch tires, that's definitely a useful item. And there's the hefty tab. Wow. And with those big tires, we get a slight drop in fuel economy over other Broncos. 17 across the board. And here's your safety ratings for those who care about stuff like that. And it says the final assembly plant, Michigan. By American. By the way, a couple of weeks ago we drove the Ford Raptor Type R with the 700 horsepower supercharged V8. We'll have a link for that video at the end of this video. And we did an awful lot of night driving headlight test on previous Broncos. So if you want to see how this operates at night, we have a video for that too. In this case, the Bronco Raptor. And here we are at our broadcasting studio where we make our videos and send them all over the world just for you. In this big tower here. And I see they delivered the Bronco in our parking lot. Fantastic. Let's check it out. Interesting green paint job. I don't know what they call it. To me it's metallic green. And those giant off-road tires. Hope I don't get a flat because I certainly don't want to change these. And one of the first things we want to do when we get a vehicle is check and see if there's a spare tire. Well, we can see there definitely is. And then we want to check the brand to see if it's a decent one. A lot of cheap, off-brand Chinese tires we can put on vehicles today to save money. These are good years. No complaints there. There are two engines available in the Bronco, the 2.3 liter EcoBoost. I think the horsepower rating last night was 275 or 300. You have this 2.7, 315 horsepower or 330. I personally have never been a fan of EcoBoost engines for just personal reasons. Some people like them, some people don't. However, this 2.7 is definitely a nice engine. It's one of the best in the Ford fleet, actually. You got the torque of the V8, very light, but if you keep your foot off the throttle, you get decent fuel economy. And they seem to be pretty reliable as far as the EcoBoost line goes. I wouldn't have any problem owning one. And one word of warning, if you do get the 2.3 four-cylinder, all right, that's fine, but there are a lot of goobers on YouTube showing how to modify Broncos, and they put these giant tires on, and that's fine if you got the V6. Do not put tires like this on the four-cylinder. You're going to be sorry if you do. It's going to put a lot of strain on that little four-cylinder, even with the fantastic torque it has because of the turbo. Your gas mileage will go straight down the toilet. We know better than the V6. So if you're going to make a big modification or get big tires, get the 2.7 V6, do yourself a favor. And here we have the Wild Track decal, so everybody knows you spent the extra money. Okay, we got a nice big info screen here with the pretty horse. Moving down, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive low, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive automatic for the street as in pavement. The power window controls are on the center console. Climate controls, very simple. For off-roading, some more buttons for you to play with. And on the trip up here, on the freeway, 17.3 MPG. And being in the fleet for 1,304 miles, averaging 16.5 MPG. Pretty close to what was cleaned on the window sticker. All right, show and tell is over. Let's do some driving. If you hear some clanking noises, uh, it's not the vehicle falling apart. I have some metal frames in the back. This is the third Bronco I've driven, and compared to the Jeep Wrangler, it's definitely more advanced and more comfortable to drive with better performance especially suspension wise. I could drive these all day long, be totally comfortable wearing a Jeep Wrangler after 
six or seven hours, you're kind of worn out and done for the day. Unless you get the Ruby Pecan package with the fancy shocks. Otherwise, this is still the king. Especially the Bronco Raptor version. That was a real sweet ride, but for almost like 90 grand. Uh, well, you can afford it. And the power steering on this is far, far better than what you get in the Wrangler or the Toyota 4Runner. Very precise. Great for driving on or off the road. And this motor is very, very sweet. Lots of torque. Very smooth, very quiet. All the power you need. Just for the record, I drove a Bronco with the 33 inch tires, which of course are smaller than the 35 inches, and the only difference of fuel economy was one mile to the gallon on the freeway. 18 there versus 17 for this. In case you're trying to decide which one to buy or what size tires to put on. And with the super powerful 414 horsepower Raptor Bronco, the fuel economy was the same as this one except you needed to use premium fuel. Yeah, this suspension is great, really sucking up these ripples. Very, very smooth. This Bronco has the removable roof panels, and you replace it with the soft top, which I have in the back. And usually these removable roof panels rattle like crazy when you're off-road, but uh, these are not. Of course, the old vehicle only has a couple thousand miles on it. Just give me a solid roof, especially if you're in the desert. I don't want that sand and dirt coming in the cabin. If you live in the forest, that's fine, but in the desert, I don't think it's a good idea myself. But you have a choice. Well, I was going to check on the cattle, but I see someone left the gate open and they ran off, so we'll have to round them up a little bit later. By the way, here's what the camera system looks like when you have the transmission in reverse. Pretty good clarity. And let's see, we have some choices here. By the way, if you're going off roading, you want to fold the mirror so they don't get scratched. And make sure you unfold them before you open the door, or you're going to hit the mirror. Bang! You gotta roll the window down and push it by hand. Like so. It's getting to be around noon, so it's pretty hot hot here in the desert. And the good news is air conditioning blows cold air. The bad news is it's extremely hot. Oh well, at least you know it's working. The comfort on the highway is pretty decent, but you do get some wind leaks around this removal roof. That's just part of the design. You just have to live with it. My, this is a rough road, isn't it? Good thing we got a good suspension, sucking up the bumps. So what's my take on this Bronco after a week of driving? It's a nice vehicle, but if you want to get one at a decent price, you'll probably have to put one on a special order. If you find one at the dealer, which is pretty hard, they'll be loaded up with everything. and cost you a lot of money. So take your pick.